R. Ask Reddit, asks, what's the best advice you've ever received for making a sandwich better? Remembering that mayo or another fat like butter or a dressing is a membrane. A barrier to liquids. So if a sandwich has mustard or wet ingredients like tomato or lettuce. The fat barrier keeps the bread from getting wet. I use the cheese for that purpose. If you dry off a large piece of the lettuce. That actually makes the best barrier to keep both fats and other liquids from soaking the bread. I use cheese for all purposes. Lightly toast the bread. And smoothly eat it. Put two slices of bread into one toaster slot. That only one side of each slice toasts leaving the outside of your sandwich crispy and the inside soft. And get lightly toasted yourself before you eat it. Hey, am I weird for liking soft bread? When making a peanut butter and jelly. Especially when packing for lunch. Spread a light layer of peanut butter on the side the jelly will go on. This prevents the jelly from bleeding through the bread. That is a great tip. People don't put peanut butter on both sides. I thought it was normal. Been making double peanut butter jelly sandwiches my whole life. I used to agree, but jelly soaked into bread, not through, is so good. And get lightly toasted yourself before you eat it. That's how I accidentally discovered using the bagel setting works great. Edit. I was toasted and accidentally hit the bagel button. Didn't want to wait for the other side to toast. Put the toasted side on the inside. You still get the crunch and none of the crumbs. Edit. Some people say your non-bagel function toaster can possibly fit two pieces of bread in one slot to get an identical outcome. Possibly without jamming and burning your kitchen. Worth a shot. Edit. A poem? Exclamation mark. Hells yes. Pepper the tomatoes. After salting them. Of course. A little pepper. 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 The bread needs to match the filling. Hard bread for hard fillings. And soft bread for soft fillings. Hard bread will squish out a soft filling as you bite it. And soft bread will just mush in your mouth as you bite through thicker and harder fillings. Edit. It's obviously not a hard rule. There are exceptions. An old Alton Brown ISM, squishable spreads for squishable breads. Dot. What would be a hard sandwich filling? Four Ebion Five TED Talk. Syrup sandwiches. A Y Y. If there's one thing Reddit has taught me, it's that I'll never have an original thought. One. Salt and pepper the tomato too. Put a light coat of butter on the bread. Sprinkle with garlic and parmesan cheese. And toast it three. Grey Poupon. Four Evian Five TED Talk. What is Grey Poupon and is it pronounced as Poupon? I use cheese for all purposes. Degree, degree. I only clicked show more comments to confirm that this would be the first one in the list. Ah, uh, beetle juicy. Username checks out. Degree, degree. I only clicked show more comments to confirm that this would be the first one in the list. Ah, uh, beetle juicing. Username checks out. Now you're the first on the list and you created a paradox. The first step towards making a great sandwich is starting with a great foundation. Bread is the foundation of a sandwich. Therefore, great bread is the first step towards a great sandwich. If you find bread that you can eat with just a nice smear of butter on it, anything else you throw on it will be great. The Dutch crunch bread is 10 out of 10. Sourdough is 11 tenths. After salting them, of course. Yeah, seriously. And while we're at it. Get some fresh basil and save the dried shit for cooking. I make a lot of grilled sandwiches and for years I would butter the bread with a knife before putting it in the hot pan. When the butter was cold that is super annoying to do. And then I realized, WTF why am I doing this? Just put a pad of butter in the hot pan and as soon as it melts drop the sandwich on it. It's the same fucking thing without the hassle or risk of tearing your bread up. Also sprinkle a little garlic powder on the melted butter right before dropping the sandwich in is usually a given. Edit, like 80 people telling me to use mayo. Sure I'll try that but can you stop spamming me telling me to use mayo? Wait, that is not a wise thing to say on here, is it? I owed it too. Another 80 people telling me to leave my butter out. I do, usually, but sometimes after using the last of it I forget to set out another stick. 
Also, my old house had very little counter space so I kept the butter in the refrigerator just because I wanted the counter as clear as possible. I never really received it, but learned it over the years. Never let the meat on the sandwich lie flat. Get thin cut slices at the deli and crumple them up on your sandwich. It makes your sandwich look much larger, but also makes it so that when bite into your sandwich, you are more likely to be tasting the meat. The meat will have a ton more surface area, so more likely to hit your taste receptors. If you don't do this, the meat is essentially compacted together and you don't really get any difference when you bite into three slices or five slices. Also, if you don't do it, then you are more tempted to load up with too much meat and wind up throwing off the balance. The one exception to this is probably for Italian style sausage type meats. Those won't generally crumple well. Cut it into triangles instead of rectangles. And in the middle, we will dump chips. Let me ask you a question. How do you feel about frilly toothpicks? Pro tip. You haven't had a real sandwich until you have one cut into the shape of a dragon. I'm for M. Have someone else make it. If possible, seriously, there was a study or something, no. I don't have the source that proved that samishes taste better when someone else makes them because you're not smelling all the ingredients and becoming desensitized to them. Or something to that effect. Removed. This is amazing. I had no idea I wasn't alone. I've long said my favorite sandwich is one someone else makes. It's not because I'm lazy or I like other people working for me. Dot the sandwich is genuinely more enjoyable for me when someone else makes it. Last weekend I made my friend's daughter a PB and J that she said was the best she's ever had. I told her that's because she has terrible parents. They both glared at me. Here's the process. Get three slices of white bread out. Put one in the toaster and toast it. Now put jelly, jam, preserves on one side of each of the remaining slices. I prefer strawberry jam, but you do you. Now rinse off the knife. People who do the PB first are just giving themselves a more complicated cleanup. Jam rinses right off. Put a liberal amount of peanut butter on one side of the toast. Approximately 2. 1 PB to J ratio. Put this on top of one of the jam slices. Put another liberal amount of peanut butter on the other side of the toast. Put the remaining jam slice on top. Boom. Double decker PB and J with a crunch in the middle and slightly melty peanut butter. Another trick is that you can use natural peanut butter. Since there's plenty of sugar in the jam already. Drink milk with it. Why non-celiacs choose to go gluten-free is beyond me. I went gluten-free due to IBS and without bread I feel physically better but emotionally sad. Might be FODMAP intolerant. 100% in this exact same scenario. Occasionally it's worth feeling physically terrible for a while if it means I get to eat a piece of pizza. Dot. I respect the amount of thought you put into your sandwich process and feel this is a safe enough space where I can say that I once broke up with a girl because she refused to change her poor sandwich making habits. Her ratios were all off and she refused to cut up the lettuce. You really had no choice if the ratios were off. Huh. My girlfriend used to brag about her sandwiches until I showed her how to really make one. I now am the sole sandwich maker, edit. Just a typo. Thanks for pointing it out. Put chips in it, edit. Well this has been a fun ride. Thanks for the gold, stranger. And thanks for the new top comment, r, ask credit. Salt and vinegar chips. Dill pickle flavored are the best choice. But those are harder to find. Edit. Sounds like the northern border of the US and all of Canada is the dill pickle heaven. Barbecue chips. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to support the channel. And above all, have an excellent day you marvelous people.